In my practice in the past 10 years, for the first time, I have patients now coming to me seeking help to get off of benzodiazepines. And this is very interesting because that was not previously the case. It was me trying to convince patients to get off of benzodiazepines. Now I have people actually seeking out my clinics specifically for help and guidance getting off of benzodiazepines. And one of the observed clinical phenomena related to this is that it is very clear that there is a cohort of patients for whom getting off of these benzodiazepines is extremely difficult. The other interesting piece of that is those are not necessarily the patients who have a history of addiction or even patients who are addicted to benzodiazepines. So it seems to be a subset of individuals with something about their DNA, their physiology, their response to benzodiazepines, which makes coming down and off of them exquisitely painful. And I find that fascinating, right? It's as if, you know, this, this dependence piece is this whole physiologic phenomenon that we really haven't figured out. Um, now, granted, some of those patients are addicted, either to benzodiazepines or other substances. But again, I just want to emphasize many of my patients who are dependent and struggle coming down and off of benzos have no history of addiction whatsoever. Um, the, the typical withdrawal phenomena that I observe is, again, the opposite of what the benzodiazepines are supposed to do. The universal symptoms of withdrawal tend to be anxiety, irritability, insomnia, and depression. There's also physical restlessness, um, kind of a jitteriness, sort of motor tics, and that's sort of the, the average withdrawal phenomenon. But I have seen a very small cluster of patients who come in with much more significant physical withdrawal. It's kind of um, really manifest as movement disorders. So they are unable to stop moving. They have um, arrhythmic jerkiness. And I've seen that go on for patients even after they've come off of their benzodiazepines. So let me just say, I, I typically do a very slow taper in these patients. Um, I advocate for a slow taper, and I'm happy to tell you, you know, why that is. But I've seen patients who not only struggle in the taper process, but continue to struggle with significant symptoms of depression, irritability, and kind of a physical restlessness that can go on for years. If you think about it from uh, the neuroscience, basically, wh what is benzodiazepine? What do, benzo what do benzodiazepines do? They work on the brain's reward pathway. What all addictive substances have in common is that they have a huge release of dopamine in the brain's reward pathway in the limbic brain. So what happens when people use uh, benzodiazepines for long periods of time, their brain adapts by decreasing their own endogenous or innate dopamine, their own dopamine receptors. So you essentially get like a dopamine deficit state, right? Because you're consuming this exogenous source of dopamine. Now, when people stop using uh, benzodiazepines and stop getting that exogenous source, what they have is a dopamine deficit. And we know dopamine is the neurotransmitter that mediates pleasure. So naturally people get depressed. And some patients get extremely depressed and even you know, contemplate suicide. I have certainly seen that. Mm -hmm.